Hey everyone, my name is Simpsy. Hey, you all doing? Welcome back to some more Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition here today on the channel. We're going to be starting a brand new campaign series on Stainless Steel 6.4. We're going to be playing a late era campaign with ruthless AI and diplomacy. We're going to be playing as the Kingdom of Norway. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. I know Medieval 2 is very dated these days, but hey, I'm a boomer. I love this game, so we're going to do another campaign, playing as Norway, a faction I've never played before on In Medieval 2, and that is because in the base game it's not available, but thanks to Stainless Steel, we've got campaigns and factions like the Teutonic Order and the Crusade States, which we could do. So let's get stuck into this hard campaign. It's 1220 AD, and Norway is in a fractured position. We are very weak at the moment due to the amount of wars in Scandinavia and in the Nordic region between Sweden, Denmark and, well, Norway. So there's a fair few ways we can go in this particular series. We are playing as King Harkon, who we'll talk about a bit later historically. We've got Prince Magnus here who is 20. So we're going to try and marry those family members off. So our capital is Oslo. We're going to start things off by getting uh, three lots of farms. We could get a mine in Bergen, which would be quite smart. So there's a fair few options and a fair few ways we can go down in this particular campaign. We're just going to get our recruitment going. So we could unite all of Sweden and Denmark under our own banner. That's going to be easier said than done, as Denmark is probably the strongest faction bordering us here in the north. They have Aarhus, they have Copenhagen, and they also have a lot of territory in and around what you would consider modern-day Sweden. So we could try and focus a full-on war against them, but we might have a better opportunity going westward, going to the British Isles, maybe try and take out Scotland um, and harass England. There also will be rebel territory in and around Ireland and Wales, potentially. So we've got Knut here and Thorgils. So we could potentially marry her off. I think to Thorgils would probably be a smart idea. Try and keep it in the family. So, and then we'll try and look to marry off Prince Magnus. I think our best bet would probably be marrying her off to the Chu uh, the Teutonic Order, or because they they're quite close to us in the Baltics, or maybe the Holy Roman Empire. It just sort of depends on which princess we can get access to. So I'm going to be a little bit risky here in this particular series. I think we'll send one full stack to the British Isles, see if we can cause some um, Viking chaos, as it were, go back to the Viking uh, Golden Age, and we'll just sort of see what happens here in Scandinavia itself. There is some rebel territory we might be able to go for, but I don't know how full-on war against Denmark would um, go. We need allies to help us. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. Faction announcements. The retinues are going to expand. Uh, Knut is the Duke of Oslo. Magnus is getting this one. And our recruitment's coming along as well. So we've got Viking Huskals, Viking Raiders and whatnot. Okay, so... I think we allow... King Harkon to go eastward. He's going to build some watchtowers for us. And Magnus is going to go westward. Now, we are technically Catholic. We do not believe in the old pantheon of gods, Thor and Odin. So, we are going to have to keep the Vatican and the papacy happy. So, is this enough? We do have a catapult. So that's not quite a stack and a half, but I think that's going to have to do. So let's head down to the British Isles. It's not too far away, and we'll see how Scotland fares. Now, unfortunately, we can't land in Shetland or the Faroe Islands. They currently aren't a territory in the map. So we're going to try and negotiate with the Holy Roman Empire. Now they do have a tendency to push into Denmark and try and claim those lands, well, north of Hamburg. So maybe trying to get good relations with them wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. 
We need to send an emissary to France. That'll give us some bonuses. The Mongols have now invaded. There's a great council. We're going to take the debt on that. And a new family member has been born. Poland and Hungary have made an alliance. And we have a son as well. Perfect. Okay, let's move my spy south. So, Skara is a rebel territory. We'll keep you to there. Move my merchant down. So let's go negotiate with the French and try and get relations with them. Okay, and I think we send Knut to move south to try and take that piece of territory. Giving us a buffer zone would be a smart idea. Okay, so financially could be a bit better. We're going to drop the farm there. I know we've wasted some turns, but that's annoying. We don't want to be too much in debt. And we'll build those watchtowers there. Okay, so we're going to mobilize an army going eastward to hopefully take our first piece of territory. We could even move in our spy depending on the odds. And we've got Prince Magnus going west. Welcome to the top of the turn. Okay, unfortunately, the Norwegian the Vikings aren't going to make it there. We've got some Huskar cavalry. So it looks like the Danes are going to make it there. So... I could have married Canute into our family of nine, but I think Thorgil is just being younger is better. No and then we got half a stack there. So I'm going to push into that rebel territory, even though it does look honor like the Danes are probably going to get there before me. Be okay. Obeyed. And I honor guess we leave Thorgil in like... Yes. In Man, Oslo, potentially. March. Or maybe... No, actually, we'll get them to drop those units to be a bit quicker. So... Do we push into up here? Okay, so I think that's a smart play. We don't want to go too close there. I am worried about um, getting taken out by the sea storm or something. So let's land you. Children's Crusade, okay. Holy Roman Empire still seems to be dominating. Those mines have been built in Bergen, and it looks like the Danes are besieging, so we're just not quick enough. That's so disappointing. So we'll sit outside, we'll keep an eye on what they've got. So that is one of their family members. Let's push south to Lund. So near Malmo, the Danes own that. So they actually, basically, it's Norway slash Sweden. Let's get trade with the French, so that's going to help our alliance. We're going to complete this mission and get two levies at our capital, but we're in a bit of a bad financial situation at the moment. And we're slowly moving down the Norwegian king. And we'll move you down here as well. We've got those two archer levies that can help out. So it's going to be a race for this rebel territory in Scandinavia now. Norway really... Sorry, Finland isn't really in the base game here. There's like one piece of territory. Okay, so I think it's ready to... Yeah, I think we're ready to attack Inverness. So we're going to declare war upon Scotland. Thankfully, we've managed to surprise attack them here. And they only have the general unit here. 32, we're going to manually play this one. As we've only got the catapult to help us out. Okay, we'll have to be a little bit careful here. To make sure the arrow towers don't destroy my catapult completely but we've landed with 1500 vikings and we've declared war upon scotland and hopefully we can use inverness the castle as a staging ground to conquer the rest of the british isles the vikings have landed back in britannia I'm sure the local inhabitants <laughs> won't be too happy. Here is the Norwegian unit roster. We've got landsmen, spear militia, looking to rebuild the North Sea Empire. That's what I'd like to do. We've got my archers deploying on the left-hand side there. They're going to be arcing their shots up and over the castle wall. And all we have to deal with is this small Scots unit inside. So let's move up slightly. We don't want to be too far up to get hit by arrow tower fire. Because we'll lose this siege. Okay, my archers here. Now, with this particular castle, you can actually move your archers to the left there and kind of cheese a nice shot in. So we're at 15%. Just trying to move up to increase my accuracy, but not getting too close to actually, well, lose it. You've just got to be careful. You want to go as close as you can to increase accuracy. 
So not the most overall micro heavy battle. So I thought we'll talk about some history as I like to do in non micro heavy battles, mostly sieges and whatnot. So we're going to be talking about our faction leader, Harkin the Fourth here today. So he was known as Harkin the Old. He was a king of Norway who reigned from 1217 to 1268. His ascent to the throne was marked by a tumultuous period in Norway with various civil wars going on and it kind of reflects that as we've only got three pieces of territory it's a really hard campaign and we're very vulnerable at the moment so Harkin was born to Inga of Vertag who claimed that he was the illegitimate son of Harkin III. His early life was fought with danger as his legitimacy was contested however his supporters particularly the influential chieftain Skull Bardsson helped him claim the throne at the age of only 13. Initially Harkin ruled under the guardianship of Bjardsson but as he grew older he gradually consolidated his power. Civil wars continued throughout Harkin's early life. A significant turn came in 1240 when Harkin decisively defeated Skull Bardsson who had turned against him at the Battle of Oslo. This victory marked the end of the civil wars and ushered in a period of relative peace and stability in Norway. Harkin's reign is noted for significant development in Norwegian law, administration and culture. He sought to strengthen royal authority and establish a more centralized government system. He also expanded Norway's influence abroad. He engaged in diplomatic relations with other European powers, a policy of territorial expansion. Under his rule, Norway asserted control over the Hebrides, the Isle of Man, and extended their influence into the British Isles. Culturally, Harkin's reign saw a flourishing of the arts and literature. He was a patron of the Icelandic sagas and commissioned works such as The King's Mirror, a text that offers insight into medieval Norwegian society and governance. Unfortunately, Harkin IV died in 1263 while on an expedition to Scotland. Hopefully in this alternative timeline, his son Magnus doesn't fall the same fate. His reign is remembered as a period of consolidation and growth in Norway. Ultimately, Harkin was succeeded by his son, Magnus, who's fighting in this particular battle in Scotland. So, I hope you enjoyed that short, brief history of Harkin, and we'll talk about his son, Magnus, a little bit later, as we claim a clear victory here today in Inverness. So we're going to keep this Scottish castle under our control. We're going to sack for the 2000 just because we're in a little bit of an economic downturn. We've got debt. <laughs> we'll try and repair the castle where we can. And now that we're in Scotland, thanks to stainless steel, we have access to Highlander units, which are okay. They'll be all right to swell our ranks. We obviously can't get the ethnic Norwegian Viking units just yet. Okay, well, let's end the turn and continue. See how Scotland reacts. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. Prince Magnus can get married off. Now, I'm not going to do that because we are better to farm princess traits on him. So, we're going to decline, and at this stage in the campaign, I think it's going to be quite easy to eventually find uh, other nobility throughout Europe. There's got to be someone we'll be able to find. Okay, just moving my spy down here. So Kelmar is under the control of Denmark as well. And they're pushing up into Sweden. Oh, it looks like they lost the battle for Skara. And that half a stack got destroyed. Perfect. So we're going to be able to siege here with Knut. And we'll go with five units of ladders. And we'll let him siege and then the king can come in. Yeah, so here is King Harkin. And we'll move in those additional reinforcements. We'll get some more from Oslo. Uh, buildings wise, let's go back and get that farm constructed that I left. Oh, so it looks like Kian is um, under French occupation. Hmm, interesting. Is that because it's a late campaign or do they get thrown out? They're not at war with the English, so maybe. Uh, map information, sure. It's only 100 gold for 18 turns, which isn't that much. And now we can see what France occupies. Okay, so let's replenish and repair where we can. We don't want to be 
too offensive in Scotland and overextend ourselves. Let's move our Viking long ships back to Oslo. We could potentially ferry over more additional units. Uh, let's go a little bit forward here into the Fog of War just to get some line of sight and potentially build a watchtower. Oh, wait, Aberdeen has no one in there except for the Prince. Okay. I don't know where Scotland is, um, but they don't seem to be here. Maybe they're down near York or in, I don't know. Okay, let's end the turn and continue. Um, okay, agent found in Inverness. Some traits have increased. Those Highland units. The Holy Roman Empire, is that what with the Teutonic Order? What? Okay, so still sieging out Skara, yes. pushing further north to Uppsala. So the Danes are nearly taking full control of... Sweden, essentially. They even have territory in the Baltics. They own Estonia, so they are quite a vast kingdom at the moment. Okay, so the army here in this rebel territory is being whittled down, so we still outnumber them. We're going to be bringing 4,000 Norwegian Vikings against their 600. Let's fight this one on the battlefield. Okay, so three generals, three units of archers. Let's hopefully take our first piece of territory here on the border of Sweden slash Norway. This is probably more Sweden, I would imagine. Okay, so let's go with a multiple pronged attack. And then hopefully this will be able to act as a bit of a buffer zone between us and Denmark. We're not at war with them yet, but... I can't see why they wouldn't ultimately attack us and become the supreme power in Scandinavia, in the Nordic countries here. So we've talked about Harkin, let's talk about his son Magnus, known as Magnus the Lawmender. So he was the king of Norway from 1263 until his death in 1280. He was the son of Harkin the Fourth and ascended to the throne following his father's death. Magnus is known for his extensive legal reforms. His reign was marked by the consolidation and modernization of Norwegian law, transforming the legal system in Norway and providing a foundation for a more organized Norwegian society. One of his major achievements was the creation of the Landslov, the national law, in 1274 and the city law in 1276. These laws replaced the older regional laws and were applied uniformly across the kingdom, contributing to a greater legal unity and stability. This act dealt with various aspects of rural life by forcing urban regulations, including trade and commerce. Magnus's legal reforms also included measures to protect his rights and those of individuals and improved the administration of justice. Magnus also worked to strengthen the power of the monarchy. He aimed to reduce the influence of the aristocracy and enhanced royal authority, ensuring a more centralized and effective government. His reforms in taxation and administration further bolstered the kingdom's stability and prosperity after his father's tumultuous reign. In foreign policy, Magnus continued his father's efforts to maintain and expand Norwegian influence. He signed the Treaty of Perth in 1266 with Scotland, ceding the Hebrides and the Isle of Man in exchange for monetary compensation and recognition of Norwegian sovereignty over the Northern Isles of Orkney and Shetland. This treaty helped secure peace and stability in the region. Culturally, Magnus's reign continued to support arts and education, he was another patron of literature and encouraged the recording and preservation of historical sagas and important texts. Magnus died in 1280 and was succeeded by his son, Eric II, who was initially ruled under a regency council due to his age. Magnus's legacy as a lawgiver and reformer has left a lasting impact on Norwegian society and his legal reforms endured for centuries. His reign is often seen as a golden age and specifically medieval Euro uh, Norwegian history, characterized by significant legal, administrative, and cultural advancements. So, this time around, hope you enjoyed a short, brief historical overview of Magnus. We might get to talk about his son, Eric, if he comes of age, or potentially any other notable Norwegian warriors or historical figures. All right, so zoning and focusing back in on this battle of Skara, 
obviously renamed after Skarborg, the fort nearby. So we're pushing into Gotland now, we're pushing into Western Sweden, and we're starting to bring these Swedish rebels under heel, under Norwegian authority. But pushing this way, we're going to be moving into the Kingdom of Denmark's sphere of influence, which nearly is a Kelmar Union, uh, essentially. And we'll keep a watchful eye on our territories in Scotland. So it's a little bit risky playing as Norway in stainless steel. It's a hard faction. A lot can go wrong. Honestly, there's basically two, well, three ways you can go. You can fully ignore the British Isles and purely focus on countries and territories and regions in around the Baltic Sea. Or you can throw yourself all into the British Isle basket. And if you lock that down, you're probably in a really strong position. We're going to do a bit of both. I don't particularly think it's that advantageous to fully abandon Oslo and Bergen and this Scandinavian region. Because it's not going to be threat. threat. There's no threat from the north or the west. A little bit of the east, potentially, if the Teutonic Order or the Republic of Novgorod sort of turn territorial and... <laughs> Imperial expansionist. Like, if the Tsardom of Russia grows, that could be your concern. Um, I don't think Poland's really going to threaten us. We could move into Lithuania as well. So, it's probably not a bad idea focusing everything on Denmark. The only thing is, if you do that and eliminate them, you do bump up against the Holy Roman Empire and potentially Poland. So, those two major factions will have a better unit roster than us. So, maybe we're better off focusing on England. We'll just have to see how the cookie crumbles in the RNG of this particular campaign. What do you guys reckon? I think for now we're going to continue on a two frontal policy. Try and pick up as much rebel territory here as we can. We might start chipping away at the Danes. Um, we could try to look to make an alliance. <coughs> oh my god. I'll keep that in. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. I have the genetic thing where I, when I look at the sun or a really bright light, I sneeze. My apologies. Oh my god, I'm sure I just scared everyone listening to this recording. Oh my god. Excuse me, bless me. Bless, bless you, Simsy. Oh my god. Right, where was I? Now I, I can't see. Right, now I can. Oh my god. Let me know in the comments. Does that happen to you? Or oh, you've had the realization that when you sneeze, it's because of bright lights? Or the sun. Yeah, that's me. I have that. I also can roll my tongue. There's other weird stuff like that. Anyway. Um, Christ. <laughs> I'm bamboozled. I bamboozled myself. <laughs> I don't know. Where were we? Okay, right. We're in Skara. Trying to take this castle. And, um, yeah. Just basically going over the policy of what we want to do. So, we'll see. Um... The enemy general is dead. Perfect. I kind of want to leave Norway as a bit of... Uh, sorry, Denmark is a buffer state between Germany and France and Poland and some of those other factions. Um, even though fully dominating Scandinavia sounds nice. Um, focusing on the British Isles as well. Or we could just... I don't know. I, I think we can do both. It, it, it wouldn't be a bad strategy abandoning everything and fully putting everything in the British Isles because it's such a strong province to hold. Okay, so Skara has now fallen, and Harkin, the king, has now taken his first piece of territory with Knut, who is 56. And we might even move some of these traits across Thorgils as well. So do I give that to Thorgils? I think so. Okay, so looking good. We'll keep this as a fort. And we'll try and build it up. 1226 AD. Uh, we can't retrain. We'll repair the castle. Any other agent moves we can do potentially? No. We can look to push into Aberdeen though. Once we repair. And we do have a catapult. So they have brought two militia in. And Prince... The Prince of Scotland there. Donald's inside. Or Don Chad. Okay. So five star. 
Alright, let's uh, fight this one on the battlefield with Prince Magnus. Alright, so an opportunity here to get rid of the Scottish Prince. I don't know where they are. They must be really far south. I don't think they're at war with England, but they have left this Northern Territory so, so vulnerable. We have managed to bring up some stakes, which is nice. But also, sometimes, same with Portugal. Scotland and Portugal tend to go on overseas expeditions. I, I have seen that they move into the Benelux region in campaigns. So overall, if they did that, that wouldn't surprise me. I have seen in a lot of campaigns that Scotland tends to take pieces of Belgium or Dutch territory. Same with Portugal pushing to Wales or Ireland. For some reason, it's hard-coded in the game and it sometimes still happens. But they might have a stronger military presence, potentially, in uh, Edinburgh. We'll just have to see. But we will have to be wary of the Pope. He's not going to like us destroying the faction of Scotland. A loyal Catholic nation. So that's something I have to keep an eye on. But that's why it's good playing as uh, the Byzantines, playing as the Republic of Novgorod in those last couple of series. We haven't had to deal with the Pope. We could get excommunicated and maybe farm away our faction leader, but... We'll see. It's great that our archers can actually use stakes. They're going to be quite useful in battles to come. So I'm just going to move up my archers here. Now, I don't think they're going to do too well arcing their shots, but they're going to distract some of that arrow fire away from my catapults because we can't afford to lose them. We're going to try and move them up as close as we can and then hopefully bring down the castle. We've been so lucky here that early on we've been able to get access to Norwegian catapults because they've been an absolute game changer for this series. It's allowed us to properly start sieging and taking territory within a turn. Okay, so my Norse archers are getting some shots off. They do have a shield on their left arm, so that's going to provide us with, well, some minimal armor protection. But let me know in the comments if you've played as Norway before. It's a pretty popular faction. I'm surprised I haven't done a Medieval 2 Let's Play on them. I do know the... Um, expansion's quite popular. The British Isles one where you can play as Ireland and Wales and whatnot. People tend to play as Norway. They're quite fun. But I want to play on stainless steel and have the full world map. I don't want to be locked in and, and zoned in purely on the British Isles. And in stainless steel, because the map is so expanded, we're going to have a pretty decent conquest of it if we do continue our conquest down. here but also we're playing as the Norwegian Vikings we don't necessarily have to stay here we could take some territory in the north maybe keep Scotland about and then bugger off maybe we can go full Viking raiding raid around Normandy and northern France maybe down to Iberia hell how about we go raid the papal sea why not and then we'll end up in Constantinople before we know it <laughs> as bodyguards for the Byzantine Emperor Alright, the gateway is being destroyed now, so let's swarm in with our brave Viking warriors as we look to annex and dominate Scotland. Hopefully eliminate them before the English do. I'm, pro I'm sure they're going to like us potentially for doing it. Alright, here they come, the brave Viking warriors now. Most of our army build is going to be made up of axemen. They're not the best. We don't have the best cavalry either. So the thing is with the Vikings, we're going to have the numbers lightning fast attacks. Obviously, having superior ships is one of our main advantages. But obviously, heavy units, heavy cavalry is not our forte. So we need to pick and choose our battles wisely. And... Lightning strike, surprise attack, where we can. So there's only two pieces of spearmen in here. Shouldn't be too hard. And then we'll deal with the general unit there as well. Okay, so fierce fighting is now breaking out in front of the gateway. And then hopefully that's two pieces of Scottish territory secured and locked down. Then we can look to push south and deal with those Scots in Edinburgh. It looks like they're going to fall to 
Norwegian occupation. So the Orkney, the Shetland are our isles. So we've got the Norwegian banner clashing with the Scottish Highland clans. They're doing pretty well. The enemy are badly bloodied. They have lost half their men. The enemy are badly bloodied. They've lost half of the men that they've deployed, apparently. And we've taken the enemy general out, so it's GG's for them. Perfect. Looking at the casualties sustained and inflicted, we've lost 100. And Aberdeen has now fallen to Norwegian occupation. We all need some more generals over here, as Prince Magnus is going to be the conqueror of Kirken. If he keeps this up. The Conqueror of Scotland. Turn to continue. Okay, welcome to the back of the turn. Lars Chemitz. Chemitz, not the most Norwegian name, but Lars definitely is. Pretty loyal, chivalrous, doesn't really bother me because we want dread. But we'll adopt him. We're not going to go down lineage. We're going to go by um, whoever's best for the job. So we'll adopt them in. We'll treat them as bastards or something. Okay, so Thorgil, let's commission a small chapel to keep in our good yes. graces of the Pope. Orders, let's Lord. build a watchtower down in the south, yes. just in case the Danes get any serve, ideas. And I'm maybe move Canute and you back here to Bergen to garrison to and, morning, well, man. manage those particular settlements. Let's get some infantry here where we can. We do have a spare amount of money. So let's get some more of them, and we'll try and ferry them down and around. I think going by sea is the best bet. It is a bit risky, because sometimes storms can make you lose units and generals, but I think it's a risk we're willing to take. Um, we will be able to win pretty decent order resolves with our navy, though. Let's say the turn to continue. William Wallace emerges. What? Nine turns in? You've got to be kidding me, man. At once. Okay, so... I, I saw I a princess here together, before. So, Elizabeth von Hohenstaufen is available for... And then we get the lines with the HRE. I think we'll time. accept that. Nice. So, Norway and the Holy Roman Empire have made an alliance. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So, if we ever go to war with the Danes, they those can be brought in. Four-star charm isn't the best, but I didn't really see any other options. Um, obviously, the higher the charm, the better quality traits you can farm. So, faction leaders and heirs, you're always better to marry them off to a princess, even if they're like two, three-star, rather than a random general, because you can just really farm good traits. So, we're going to do that. So, hopefully, the future king of Norway will be half... German, and we'll have a, a claim to the imperial throne in the south. So hopefully that just keeps the HRE off our back. So that's a legitimate strategy as well, allying up with them rather than the Danes. Okay, so what's happened here then? So the Scottish king died, and oh, that's so annoying, man. Look at this. William Wallace is spawned with two full stacks in the Highlands. How are we going to win? Wait, what? Why is Edinburgh undefended? Uh, <laughs> well, Magnus and his cavalry are just going to march on in. Oh, it's because we're not at war with them because the king died? Interesting. So we're going to just push down and take it. The Scottish king is now dead. Hang on a minute. <laughs> oh my god. How did we cheese that? So Scotland's going to be destroyed, and we're not going to get excommunicated. <laughs> so because the king died, and they've lost some territory, I think it triggered the event to spawn all of Scotland's units down here, but we're going to be able to bypass them <laughs> and take the capital and destroy Scotland. Well, that was easy. <laughs> They're going to be there. We'll deal with them at some point. There's still going to be a problem, but Scotland as a faction is no more. Magnus, you beauty. Um... Oh, that's really too cheesy. I don't know if I should have done that. Well, defeat of Scotland. Perfect. <laughs> we still have to deal with the Highland rabble at some point because we're going to have really bad 
um, economical effects for there. But who cares? William Wallace can hang out in the woods <laughs> with his Kilton flowers. Um, that's interesting. Maybe England took out their faction? I'm not too sure. Anyway, we're going to get trade with them. We'll try and get Matt. But Scotland is no more. The Norwegians rule the Highlands now. Yep, so the Scottish King is dead. Oh, I'm so happy that Scotland as a faction is destroyed. <laughs> what happened? Maybe the English um, got rid of them, I don't know. The Pope likes us because we built a chapel in Skara now, though. Okay, so... Let's build a... Well... Public happiness yes. building. <laughs> I don't even know what I can say what that is. Okay, um... Can I help? So, let's move my spy down here, diplomat. So, well, my diplomat's going to act as a spy. So, York's there. We could take it and rename it Jorvik. That'd be cool. Still holding Skata. Um, we're going to get try and get more construction done. Logging camp. Knut can move to Bergen. And we'll move, what, Thorgill's here. Uh, we'll rally up here, and then we'll try and ferry over more infantry. So Scotland has been destroyed. A little bit anticlimactic. They got the RNG of spawning all those units, but they were away. I can't believe... He must have been somehow... He must have just randomly died or something, because normally they wouldn't leave it there that vulnerable. Okay, so they are pushing into our territory, so that's not good. So we'll, we'll move the... Uh, recruited units from Aberdeen now. I don't particularly want to move through the Highlands because I think they're going to get intercepted. So let's go by sea to get to Edinburgh, our new regional capital. Let's move the navy back and we'll try and ferry units down from Inverness. And we're going to try and make sure we don't lose this really good position we're in. Let's end the turn and continue. See how England or potentially... Oh, the Danes react. Great, we're at war with Denmark. Who would have thought? God damn it. I think it's bugged now, because it keeps on saying the Scottish King is dead and they're destroyed, I know. Um, okay, so they want me to block the port of Visby. I think that's maybe Rebel. Yeah, Scotland's bugged. That's annoying. Eric is now being born, though. That's cool. And a lot of factions are at war there, Crusader States. But the Danes and the Norwegians are officially at war. I wonder if the HRE will get involved. Okay, so let's continue on again. Still trying to build up in Scotland. Yeah, that's perpetually going to come up. Jens Ralfensen, 16. Um, a candidate for the king. Sure, let's bring him in. The more the merrier. Oh no, Knut is no more. He died in Bergen. Well, I guess Lars can go over there or something. A Viking longboat has been constructed, and we're trying to grow our family tree as large as possible. Okay, so we are at war with the Danes. They stopped blocking Oslo. Yeah. So let's get Thorgil um, back over there. Let's reassign these traits. So Lars can probably stay there. We'll keep the king here as well. Okay. So we're just going to make sure we get a full stack in Skara. And then we'll see if the Danes push up, potentially. Yes, Lord. Let's go with the diplomat here. My um, we might push to what would it be Malmo? I can't remember what it is. Down in the south on the border there, Lars Chimitz yes. can sit there. We've got another Lars, don't of we? Um, full stack here in Edinburgh. We could look to push against the English. We'll see. Okay, welcome to the top of the turn. Uh, those uh, generals got some more retinues, which is nice. That's being constructed, the happiness building. And we've also got Dan Ulfsen. And, oh, England have attacked us. Great. you got to be kidding me. Right, 13 turns in. Um, we're at war with the Danes and England. Sire. They own Kelmar. We're going to move our spy down to Lund. So far, they haven't pushed over the border. My lord. Although we're at war, they haven't really done anything. So let's posture, move you to Skara, and let's get the king to push south, I suppose. We're going to push to an advanced position and hopefully try and take some territory, ideally. All right, let's push that back. Relationships worse, and you declared war upon me. I imagine some of their armies are in the east. Roskilde. 
is something you want to try and get to. And we'll move those generals westward. And now we're all with England as well. So we're going to have to jump over there. Um, economically, could be doing a little bit better. Let's get a blacksmith there. Okay, so they do have a half a stack there somewhere floating around. So they've moved to Carnarvon. I don't think that was the army though. And then we've got the HRE. If I could get them in this war against the Danes, that would be ideal. I could even try and give them some of that border Germanic territory. I'd give them Aarhus or Roskilde if you could diplomacy, if you'd be that shrewd, like, diplomatically. Okay, um, hmm. The port is getting blockaded, so let's advance out. Uh, let's move to the border here in York. Um, oh, we somehow bypassed a ambush there, so that's pretty good for us. Okay, let's end the turn and continue, see how the AI reacts. Is that the French? Or is that the Danes blockading us? Uh, England is trying to bribe the city of Edinburgh. Unless you got a case of iron brew and some deep fried Mars bars, I don't think that's going to happen. Miss Plantagenet. <laughs> Anything else? I think the French attacked us. Am I tripping? A uh, new mission, send an emissary to Poland. We're at war. No, the HRE are at war with them, though. Okay, so... That army's still sitting there. The I think we've got an opportunity to maybe hit Lund. Wait, Prince Eric is there. Interesting. Alright, so we're going to bypass that first army, and we're going to try and hit this second one. So... Vermundsen... Oh, wait, the HRE is attacking Aarhus, if you look on the left. Oh, wow. And then Prince Eric's there. Well, we'll fight this one on the battlefield. Okay, so our first battle against the Danes is coming up. We have an opportunity if we can crush the reinforcing army to take Lund. So I guess... Well play. We've negotiated with the HRE. We'll give them Aarhus. We'll take Roskilde. And... Any... Scandinavian territory. I could even give them Roskilde, potentially. Alright, so... This army is going to drag out the garrison of Lund, which is perfect. We're going to bypass that first army with King Harkin. And then hopefully get rid of Prince Eric. Let's swing around here. So we're currently at war with the English as well. We might be able to have the Siege of York here today. Oh, Jorvik. What it should be called. We could go through and rename historic Viking towns to their proper name. That'd be quite funny. Okay, so... Yikes. Losing a little bit here. Army roster-wise, we just don't have the best units, I'm not gonna lie. The Scandinavian factions don't have the best roster. So, although... We might strategically win a lot. It's going to be um, due to a lot of casualties. Okay, so not exactly what I wanted. A two frontal war, but we'll see how we go. We somehow managed to defeat Scotland here today, which is massive. We got so, so lucky. But now, in doing so, it has angered the other neighbouring... Catholic factions. <laughs> We're at war with England and Denmark, so who would have thought? Okay, so it doesn't look like we're going to be able to move into Wales, though. So. Okay, just trying to deal with this bodyguard here. Move the my archers up to try and curtail. The enemy general lies dead. Perfect. So that's one of the, the Norwegian family runs. members. Blue or blue. Norwegian, sorry, Danish. It's all Nordic to me. <laughs> Alright. Archers are trying to get some shots off of that reinforcing army. Still 90% favoured to win this one. Okay. I know the battles are a little bit dated. I know Medieval 2 is dated, but... I just have so much fun, like, microing these battles. I don't know what it is. I know a lot of you guys are here for the newer Total Wars, but... I love running a Medieval 2 campaign from time to time. And I love Stainless Steel. SSHIP is good, but it's just 
way, way too time consuming. I feel like there's certain campaigns that take three, four times like a normal vanilla campaign. That's DEI. That's SSHIP. Um, saying the steel's pretty good. It still adds so much more than vanilla, but it's not as time intensive. Like, for example, I could probably have three, four campaigns running on the channel. I could only have one or two. DEI or SSHIP. Just because the turn times, recruitment and stuff is just too long. Like, I think it took me a month to finish the Roman campaign. Maybe longer. Okay. But I'd highly recommend staying in the steel if you haven't picked it up. But so far, pretty interesting campaign. Can't predict exactly what's going to happen. Okay, we need to make, fo make uh, focus on these reinforcements coming on here. But so far, if we can start carving up the Kingdom of Denmark with the Holy Roman Empire, that's ideal. So that's really good, trying to get an alliance with them. Thankfully, we've had family members able to marry in. Uh, I want to try and run down as many of them here as possible. And then hopefully that's enough to take the city. Clear victory. 316 remaining. I don't know if it's enough. So I'm going to do the bad thing here and get rid of them. Oh, he just ran through. Unfortunately, we didn't get Prince Eric. I tried my best. Very poor relations with the Danes. Oh, there's only 15 left in his unit and we can't just march in. So we are going to be a little bit exposed sitting here for a turn. We will siege Atlund though. Back over in the British Isles. So that half a stack moved back to York. So, wait, let's offer a ceasefire, but an army popped up. How did they get... Well, okay. Um, somehow we've managed to find a army here ambushing. Captain Robin, where's Batman? Because you fucked up. Okay, so let's attack that. That's going to draw out the army. Let's force a land battle. I'd much rather do, do that than a siege. All right, Prince Magnus is going to have a battle here against the English. Here we go. Uh, looking at the topography of this battle map, it is not good whatsoever. So, we have to deal with Captain Robin, the fool. His three units. Let's push up. We need to win quickly, but they're baiting us into the thick forest. And if we leave where we deployed, we're going to be giving the reinforcing garrison army the high ground. So we've got to be quick. So our first battle against the English here today could end in catastrophic disaster. But, because we've done so well in Scotland, I think we're in a stronger position. So Prince Magnus fully focusing on the British Isles campaign, while King Harkin back in Scandinavia is dealing with the Nordic Civil War, I suppose. Okay, so let's try and eliminate these units here. Now, because we are occupying Scotland, Culturally, those units are starting to intertwine with our army build. So we've got two units of Highland Axemen here, and we've also got some Border Warriors too. So let's deal with these feared Spearmen. As we look to try and take some English territory. The enemy general is no true man, he's starting to flee, perfect. And we'll try and bring the Dane Law back. Make Dane Law great again, boys. <laughs> yeah, I think we should definitely, um, if we take York here, call it Jorvik. Unless it, like, crashes the game for whatever reason. Okay, nice. We've captured Captain Rob and only half the enemy force remains. Nice. Okay, so let's just make sure we run down as many of them as possible. Let's re-grab my infantry here. Okay, so here they come. Can we get up to this high ground here? Yikes. Yeah, this is what I wanted to try and hold. We do have some catapults here to help. Alright, let's try and swing them around. Let's try and get Prince Magnus back. Okay. So at the moment, only operating with two full stacks, really. Only time will tell how successful this bid is. Yeah. High risk, high reward going over the British Isles. Now in Scotland, it's managed to pay off. But I don't know. I don't know if I'd recommend it to everyone's playthrough and campaign. Sometimes you can just get lucky like we did. Sometimes not so much. I don't know. What do you think is more of a sound strategy? Stay and unite Scandinavia 
throw everything to the British Isle basket or try and focus on the two. Okay. Maybe we go to the right hand side of the hill. Pushing up there. I just don't know if we're going to have time. Move my archers here as well. Same with my catapults. Man, those catapults have been an absolute godsend. They've been so, so helpful for us. Okay, let's reform up. Just facing a random English general. No one who is that notably renowned. Let's move my cavalry to the right hand side. But maybe having a Scottish Highlander infantry will help us out a bit. Okay, so the English are moving up their archers. They're getting some shots off against me. Let's swing around to this right hand side. My archers are now moving up. We should be able to start peppering them. We don't have the highest volume of them. Oh, they actually have a ballista unit there. Crikey, watch out for that. Alright, try and target their side. No, move back. You're going to get caught. Okay, right. Let's move my cavalry on the right hand side. We'll try and attack their archer units and smash them if they're isolated. We've got to get that ballista unit because oh, my fear in Medieval 2 was always one of those rogue ballista shots hitting a general unit. And taking him out. Used to happen in vanilla Rome a lot. <laughs> and I'm bloody always petrified and cursed that it's going to happen. Okay. They seem to be a little bit exposed. Our men are winning the battle, which is good, thanks to the advisor. Supposedly, if we continue like this, we're going to smash them. Okay, let's give out some attack orders now. I just warmed up a front line, but because they're not the most united at the moment, it's probably not a bad idea to start going. Ooh, just going to be a little bit careful here. Ooh. My cavalry units are looking a little bit green. The manpower is dropping. Archers, not so much. They're now shaken. Okay. It's about 60% in our favor. Can't see us losing. We're wrapping them here quite nicely. We just need to crush this reinforcing army as best as we can. This time around, we've got catapults here in Britannia. Um, last time when in Lund, we were trying to take the castle in one turn. We didn't have catapults to follow it up. Okay, so they're now in a retreat, but we want to try and make sure the cavalry run them down properly. The general's bodyguard is still there. So it doesn't seem to be a high-ranking Plantagenet general, just a randomly generated one. Only half the enemy but hopefully um, England are going to be distracted a bit in this particular campaign. They don't seem to have any territory in Aquitaine or in Normandy for whatever reason. Maybe they lost it. Okay. A couple more units holding. Feuard spearmen and some Norman sergeants. We could even go raiding Norman Sicily. That could be a thing, actually. I'm sure they'd culturally accept us. Some of the inhabitants. Our distant Viking brothers. Nice. They're about to capitulate. Okay, so we've been surprised attacked by England and the Danes, but overall, we are managing to hold and maintain well. Okay. Just let's push for that cluster. The general's bodyguard there is still wreaking a little bit of havoc. Um, you're idly sitting by there. You need a reform. Okay. Come on. They're now broken. Perfect. They're about to capitulate, surely. Who's still in the battle? Like one unit here. I don't know which one it is. Oh, no. There we go. Right. Let's just run them down. Make sure we gobble all of them up. 733 plus 
captives taken. And that's all the infantry done. Then it's just the general's bodyguard, which we're not going to be able to catch. All right, let's exit the battle there. Clear victory for the Danes. I keep on calling us Danes. We're Norwegian. Damn it. All right, so he escaped. You've got to be kidding me. The papals he doesn't like me? He attacked me. All right, let's push into York and take... Our old city. Let's sack. Nice. And let's call it Jorvik. Perfect. For the Norwegians. Let's do it. The Danes failed. Now it's the Norwegians' turn. Turn the turn to continue. Oslo's been attacked. Okay. So we're going to have to make sure that gets played. Uh, Inge. Thodberg. Candidate for adoption. Oh, what? King Harkin has died. Assassinated. Assassino. Assassino. Who did that? I guess it was the Danes. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That's annoying as. That's pretty anticlimactic. Um. Well, I guess we do that because... Oh, wait. He's a candidate for Magnus. The Pope wants us to cease hostilities. Oh, no. No. Gonna leave it on a cliffhanger. We've got a new faction leader. King Magnus. All the way in the British Isles. Oh, that's annoying. As if the Danes did that. I guess it's the difficulty. Sometimes they can just spam out assassins. Okay, so now we have a new prince. Prince Jens in Skarda. So what do we do now? We gotta marry him off. Oh, they failed in Wales, hilariously. We can't do any more battles in England for five turns. I'm nearly happy to wait. We doubt that it would have been better if that came before because Do you it would have reset our Goodbye. ceased hostilities by the look yes. of it. Okay, so can we make a ceasefire with the Danes? Uh, no, they're not interested. Whatever. Um, I could move Prince Jens down, but he might just get assassinated again. So, we'll fight the Battle of Lund at the start of the next episode. Alright, well, unfortunately on that note, it's time to wrap things up here. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the first episode of my Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition Stainless Steel Norwegian Campaign. Stay tuned for episode 2 coming out tomorrow or soon. Like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Make sure to carry yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsey. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Support this if you want to see more Medieval 2 on the channel. I love you. Goodbye.